Hello everyone from Math 2200, Discrete Mathematics. It's Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks section 10.9. This is counting multi-sets, or multi-sets. Alright, so uh, a set is a collection of distinct items, right, and so far we've been working with mostly counting involving sets with you know different looking items a multi set or multi set now let's say multi set from here on out is a collection that can have multiple instances of the same kind of item all right so when the expression you know here's the set with 1 2 2 and 3 is viewed as a set the repetitions don't matter and you would say that this is equivalent to the set with 1, 2, and 3 in it. However, when you look at this set and view it as a multi-set, multi-set, then the fact that there are two occurrences of 2 is important. All right, and then these sets are not considered equal, this set, this multi-set, because of this extra occurrence of 2. All right, so you got to pay attention to which scenario are you in? Are we considering something as a set where repetition doesn't matter? Or are we considering something as a multi-set where repetition does matter, does count separately? All right, two multi-sets are equal if they have the same number of each type of element. All right, uh, the curly braces denote the fact that the order in which the elements are listed does not matter, right? Remember parentheses meant order order mattered the braces mean you know order does not matter we have seen that before so the set multi set with 1 2 2 and 3 is equivalent to the multi set with 2 1 2 and 3 cuz they have the same elements exactly multi sets are useful in modeling situations in which there are several varieties of objects and one can have multiple instances of the same variety. All right. So suppose that a customer at a bakery is selecting a dozen cookies to buy. There are four varieties of cookies, chocolate chip, sugar, ginger, and oatmeal raisin. Cookies of the same variety are indistinguishable. All right, so that means if you have one sugar cookie and look at another one, they look exactly the same. All right, so you can't tell sugar cookies apart, you can't tell the chocolate chip cookies apart, the ginger cookies apart, and the oatmeal raisin cookies apart. You can't tell, you can't tell two cookies of the same variety apart. A selection of cookies is a multi-set of size 12, in which the elements are cookies chosen from the four different varieties. An example of a selection of 12 cookies would be three chocolate chip, two sugar, two ginger, and five oatmeal raisin, which would be denoted by the multi-set, you know, CCC for the three chocolate chips, SS for the two sugars, GG for the two gingers, and, you know, o o o o for the five oatmeal raisin cookies. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, when we're selecting objects, you know, of different varieties, but, you know, every every element of the same variety looks exactly the same. Uh, we're, t we're talking about counting multi-sets. Alright, so which multi-set is equivalent to the multi-set A, B, B, B? Well, anything with 1A and 3Bs in it. So, this one here. Right. Which multi-set is equivalent to the multi-set 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3? Uh, so again, any, any set, any multi-set with one one two twos and three threes. So this one, one one two twos and three threes. Those are equivalent multi-sets. All right, suppose we want to count the number of ways to select those 12 cookies from those four varieties. All right, the chocolate chip, uh, sugar, ginger, and oatmeal raisin. We define a bijection between the set of possible cookie selections and a certain set of binary strings called code words. 
Each string in the set is uniquely encodes a cookie selection. Every cookie selection is encoded by a unique code word. Therefore, the number of code words is equal to the number of distinct cookie selections. The encoding requires that the varieties be ordered in an arbitrary but fixed order. For the cookie selection example, the varieties are ordered chocolate chip, sugar, ginger, and oatmeal raisin. Uh, the diagram below shows an example of a cookie selection and its corresponding code word. So if you were to select, say, the three chocolate chip cookies, the two sugar cookies, two ginger, and five oatmeal raisin, the code, the binary code word used for that selection, and again, in the order specified, chocolate chip, sugar, ginger, oatmeal, you have three zeros representing the three chocolate chip cookies. And then ones act like a divider. Ones act like a divider between the different varieties. So I have three zeros and then a one, and then the next zeros represent sugar cookies. So I have two zeros there. Then a one, then the next zeros represent ginger cookies, two of those, and then a, a final one to separate the last variety, and the number of zeros there represent the oatmeal cookies, five zeros. Hopefully that makes sense, right? We're going to be able to do this for any selection of 12 cookies from these four varieties. All right. So the table below summarizes how to encode a selection using code words, right? using these binary strings. The different varieties are numbered from 1 to M. All right, so say N represents the number of items you're selecting right, like the 12 cookies, the dozen cookies that are being selected up here. And n will be the number of zeros in the code word. See how there are 12 zeros in this code word for all the 12 cookies you're selecting. m will be the number of varieties. So up here, m would be four. There were four different varieties of cookie. So there'd be M minus one ones in the code word, right? You know, see how there are three ones? Again, the, that just separates the zeros into their four groups. You can think of the ones as dividers. The number selected from the first variety is the number of zeros before the first one, and so on. And the number selected from the last variety is the number of zeros after the last one, All right? So you might, then you're going to ask basically, you know, how many ways can I select 12 cookies then from these four varieties is asking how many of these code words could I possibly make? Well, notice that the length of this code word is 15, All right? There are 15 bits, 12 zeros and three ones. And remember how, you know, and 12 of them have to be zero. Three of them have to be one. So the number of code words I could make would be 15 choose 12 or, you know, 15 choose 3, which is what they're talking about down here. All right. So m plus m minus 1 divided by m minus 1. 15 choose 3, that's now the 15 spaces to fill, the 15-bit string length. And I'm choosing where the three dividers go, the three ones, to separate my vo four varieties. Right. And then the other 12 would be represented by zeros, and those represent, you know, cookies. All right. So they give you, you know, I'll play, some an I'll play this animation here for you. So they give you more examples here, like this bit, this code word, this bit string. You got two chocolate chip, you know, then, then a one, and then this, you know, four sugar, then a one, then one ginger, then a one, then uh, five uh, oatmeal. All right. And that's another possible selection of 12 cookies from these four varieties. And you could do all sorts of, you know, you could do all sorts of more of them. 
right? Uh, they're just showing you another picture of them. Then here's another code word representing another selection where if you have one one that means there's no zeros in front of the first one, no zeros in front of the second one, so you choose no chocolate chip, no sugar, and then you have a bunch of zeros before the third one, so there's seven ginger and then five oatmeal. That's another possible selection of 12 cookies from these four varieties. So hopefully you can see just from these several examples you've seen that these num these numbers of code words that we can create represent, you know, they, cor they have, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence of bijection with the number of cookie selections that could be made from these four varieties. All right, and then uh, mapping cookie selections to code words. Again, they're just showing you the bijection, right? Every, every code word has a cookie selection. Every cookie selection has a code word. Right, so there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, a bijection between them. So there should they should have the same number of options, the same number of possibilities. All right, so let's do an example here. And this one I'll actually write out. So 10 balls are selected from a large set of balls that come in three colors, blue, red, and green. All right, so you have like three varieties of ball. Balls of the same color are identical. All right, that just means, you know, if you have two blue you can't tell them apart. You know, you have two red, three red, you can't tell them apart. And the greens, you can't tell apart. Number the colors so that the blue is variety number one, red is variety number two, and green is variety number three. So how many bits will there be in a code word or an encoding of, of this selection? So think about it. Here's one possible. Remember, there, we're selecting, you know, it says 10 balls are selected. This is like the N that was mentioned earlier. There are three varieties of ball, right? There are three, you know, that you can't tell apart, you know, that you can't tell all the blues and the reds and the greens apart. That's like the M that was selected earlier. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this is like the number of divider, uh, the number the number of varieties. Now this is the number of zeros. That means there are ten zeros in the code word, right? In the bit string that we're going to create. And to make three varieties, you just need two dividers. So there are two ones in the code word that we made. We ma we make. And the order that they put the varieties in, they said they're, they're having, you know, blue is variety number one, then red, then green. Right, that's the order that they're putting the varieties in. So an example code word would be, say, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero one, and then zero, 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 zero. And this would represent this selection where I've taken three blues, three reds, and four green. All right, and that is one possible way I can select 10 of these balls. All right, uh, but that's not the only one, you know. And again, the two dividers separating the three varieties. Uh, I could have this, you know, just ten zeros, and then one one. This would be the possible selection of, you know, if if, if all ten were blue. And right, if I selected all ten blue, and then you see after the after this first one, there's no zeros, so zero red. And then after the last one, there's no zeros, so zero green. All right, this is another possible way to select 10 of these balls. So we have these strings of length 12. All right, we have these code words, these bit strings of length 12 with 10 zeros and two ones. So the total number here Right, the total number of possible selections I could make would be 12 choose 10 
or 12 choose 2. Uh, either way, remember these are equal. You can either choose where all the zeros go or choose where all the twos go. Okay. And this would be, uh, what, 12 times 11 divided by 2. This would be 66. There would be 66 possible ways I could select 10 balls from these three varieties. All right, so back here, and there would be 12 lawn. Uh, which of the string would you know, having five blue, two red, three green. So five zeros first, then one, then two zeros for the red, then a one, uh, then three zeros. Uh, this is too many. This one here, right? This has five zeros, then a one, two zeros, then a one, and then three zeros. Uh, which selection corresponds to three zeros, then one? Then you got seven zeros and a one, so this is three blue, seven red, no green. Right. And again, I've already counted the number of ways that could happen. That there'd be sixty-six different ways to select ten balls from these three varieties. That's twelve choose ten, or or twelve choose two. Okay, and uh, again, they're saying this here, right? The number of ways to select n objects from a set of m varieties of objects and types of objects is this m plus m minus 1 choose m minus 1. Now this is if there is no limitation on the number of each variety available right? and the objects of the same variety are indistinguishable. So this last example that you know that what that means is that you know, there's no limit to how many blues you can take. You can have all 10 blues. There's no limit to how many reds you can take. You can have all 10 reds. There's no limit to how many greens you can take. You can have all 10 green. And you can't tell any of the blues apart from each other. You can't tell any of the reds apart from each other. You can't tell any of the greens apart from one another. So this is, this is pretty specific. All right. All right, so this can apply too to solving equations. Count, count, not, not, not exactly solving them, but just counting how many solutions a, an equation can have, how many integer, positive integer solutions, or non-negative integer, I should say. You know. So an example here, consider this equation. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 12. The question is, how many solutions are there to the above equation if all the variables have to be non-negative integers. All right, so let's think about that. I'll write this down. And you'll see it ends up being very similar, exa almost exactly the same scenario as selecting objects from so many varieties. So we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. All right, it needs to be equal to 12 and all these variables are non-negative integers. So just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Right. So this is exactly like the 12, don't, uh, 12 cookies with four varieties uh, earlier, a uh, scenario earlier. Let's think about it. Here's, uh, here's some examples of solutions. I could have x1 be, you know, 5. I could have x2 be 3. I could have x3 be 1. You know, that's uh, 8, 9, and then x, x4 would have to be 3. Right to make a sum of 12, right? So there's an example, one solution. And do you see this code word? I, I, I'm going to do another code word type thing where uh, it goes in the order of x1, number, numbers for x1, numbers for x2, numbers for x3, numbers for x4. So I have five zeros and then a one. This tells me I'm putting in five for x1. And then three zeros then a 1, this tells me I'm putting in 3 for x2, 1, 0, then a 1, putting in 1 for x3, and then 3 zeros, right? putting in 3 for x4. So it's 
Again, it's, it's, it's just like the 12 cookies with four varieties. X1, X2, X3, X4. So it's just like the 12 objects, four varieties. Right? So selecting 12 objects from four varieties. It's exactly the same scenario. So remember the number of ways to do that. The number of ways to select 12 objects from four, you know, four varieties where you know you're unlimited. You can select as many of the four varieties uh, each from each variety as you want. And also, the uh, every object in the same variety is indistinguishable. Right? You can't tell them apart. Uh, well, we'd have you know we'd have to have twelve zeros and three ones, so that'd be a, 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 a bit string of length fifteen. And again, I fifteen choose you know choose where the three ones go, or fifteen choose you know choose where the twelve zeros go. These would be the same value. And you could calculate that in your calculator or write it by hand. But you see, it's the same, same scenario. Same scenario. All right. So again, here, uh, give your answers. And now they say write it as n choose k in the words. So here, this is the same thing. How many solutions are there to this equation? Where each of the variables, you know, x1 through x5 is a non-negative integer. So it can be 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 30, basically. So again, now instead of selecting 12 cookies from 4 varieties, this is like selecting 30 cookies from 5 varieties. So I'd have to have 30 zeros and 4 ones in the code word, in the bit string. So this would be 34, right? There'd be 34, 34 bits, and then choose, uh, you know, choose where the 30 zeros go. Or you could do 34 choose 4 and right? choose where the 4 ones go that separate the categories. And that's how many non-negative integer solutions an equation like this will have. Okay. Uh, and this has been mentioned before, you know, a set of identical items are called indistinguishable because it's impossible to, you know, to tell them apart, right? Distinguish one of the items from the other. A set of different or distinct items are called distinguishable because it is possible to distinguish one of the items from the others, right? You can you can tell them apart. They have a different look to them. So, what we have done here is counted the number of ways to place indistinguishable balls into distinguishable bins. All right, where we have like the like the 12 cookies into four varieties or the number of solutions to these equations that are non-negative integers is taking, you know, my zeros and right, taking a bunch of balls that look all the same, they all look like zeros. They're indistinguishable balls, and putting them into distinguishable bins. You know, these balls go are from the first variety, from the second variety, from the third variety, from the fourth variety, etc. So again, how many ways are there to place indistinguishable balls into distinguishable bins? Right, where you can tell the varieties apart. Right, the varieties are different. You can tell what they, those are, but the balls are the same looking. And it's the same scenario as this, same scenario as the cookies. It's, you know, the number of balls plus the number of bins minus one. You know, that's how long the, the code word would be. And then you choose the number of bins minus one. Right? Choose where the ones go or choose where the zeros go. All right, um, so now we're asked to consider a situation where indistinguishable balls are placed into distinguishable bins, which is what we've just been talking about, with the constraint that there must be at least a certain number in some of the bins. 
All right, so this is a little different. You know, up here, you could have no balls in one of the bins. All right. In the in all these scenarios, one of these values could be zero. All right. Um, but now we're given we're given some restrictions. Yeah. So for example, suppose that a teacher uh, distributes ten identical chocolate bars, right? so the ten ident identical balls, to five different kids. These are the distinguishable bins, you know, five kids that you can tell apart. But wants to make sure that each kid gets at least one chocolate bar. How many ways are there for the teacher to distribute these chocolate bars with this additional constraint? All right, so this is simple enough, right? What you do is you make that happen. Give each kid one chocolate bar. And then it's like you're starting the problem over. Once I give each kid a chocolate bar, you know, then I'll have five indistinguishable balls to put into five distinguishable bins. So five, so then I'd be basically creating code words, bit strings with five zeros and four ones, and it would be nine choose five or nine choose four. And this I show you down here. So just make it happen. You know, if there's some sort of restriction, make that constraint happen, and then start over. So for example here, and again write your answers with the words, you know, n choose k. So there are seven varieties of donuts sold at a bakery. And you know, each variety is different. So these are the seven distinguishable bins. How many ways are there to select a dozen donuts? These dozen donuts are the 12, they're like 12 indistinguishable balls into seven distinguishable bins. The order in which the donuts are selected does not matter and donuts of the same variety all look the same. Alright, so this one, I'm going to write on paper here. This question is like solving this equation, where we have x1, you know, there were seven varieties. So they're like seven distinguishable bins, you know, maybe frosted and, and glazed and chocolate and whatever, right? All these, all these different varieties of donut. And we're selecting 12 of them. So I would like the numbers in all these to add up to 12, right? Selecting 12 donuts from seven different varieties. Now there were no restrictions here, right? So with no restrictions, meaning some of these can be zero or more, right? With no restrictions, this is the typical problem we've been seeing in this section. I have n equals 12, and I have, you know, the number of varieties equals seven. And so when we create our little bit strings, we'd have code words or bit strings of length 12 plus 6, right? We'd need 12 zeros and 6 ones, right? Of length 18 with 12 zeros for the donuts and 6 ones to divide the categories, right? To divide the varieties. So the number of ways to solve this equation, you know, with non-negative integers Right, where anything can be 0 to 12, uh, that would be 18, choose 6. You know, code words of length 18, and I'm choosing where the 6 ones go, or, or 18, choose 12, right? Choose where the 12 zeros go. And that's what we're going to, and again, you can punch that in your calculator, find an exact number, but they just want to enter a, have us enter it here with choose, you know. Um, 18 choose 6. Okay, so now we're given restrictions. So there are seven varieties of donuts sold at a bakery. Same, 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 same start. How many ways are there to select a dozen donuts? If the selection 
must have at least one of each variety. All right, so back to my paper now, this is part two. At least one of each variety must be chosen. So let's make that happen. So I'm going to give one to, you know, I'm going to take one of those, 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 one of those. I'm going to take one of each. And now we're looking at this equation instead. x1 plus x2, you know, all the way up to x7, the seven varieties. If I, Now, if, if think about it. If I've already taken one of each of those seven donuts, seven types of donut, I only need to select five now. And then you kind of start over. All right. So now I've t taken one of each donut, and then the rest of the ways I could select, I need to you know make a selection for the for the remaining five donuts. And again, there are still seven varieties. So there'd be five zeros for the donuts, and there are seven varieties, so six ones for the dividers. So a total of eleven. Right? There's eleven bits in my code. So the number of ways this could happen, the number of ways I could select a dozen donuts, such that I get at least one from each variety, would be 11 choose 5 or 11 choose 6. I have a bits, uh, a, a code word of length 11, and I can either choose where the six ones go or the five, or the five zeros go. Right, so this is 11, I'll say 11 choose 5. Okay, so here's a different kind of question. Susan must do exactly 100 push-ups in the course of a seven-day week. How many different schedules are there for her to do her push-ups? That's it. All right. So, again, to a piece of paper. Now, there are seven days in the week. You can think of those as the distinguishable bins and the hundred push-ups as the indistinguishable balls. So we're looking at this equation, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, number of push-ups on a Thursday, plus the number of push-ups on the Friday, plus the number of push-ups on the Saturday, plus the number of push-ups on the Sunday, seven varieties must add up to exactly, you know, it says you want to do exactly 100 throughout the week. Now, the first problem here, there's no restrictions. No restrictions. So she could do none here, none here. You know, she could do all 100 on day 7 and, and 0 on every other day. But any variable can be anything from 0 to 100. No restrictions. So with no restrictions, the number of ways she could divvy up her 100 push-ups well, you'd have a hundred zeros, right? The hundred push-ups. There are seven days, so break it up into you know, seven categories. You break it up with six ones. So there'd be a hundred and six bits in the code word. So there'd be a hundred and six bits, and you choose where the six ones go, or choose where the hundred zeros go. All right, so this would be a hundred and six. Choose uh, six. That'd be probably pretty big. All right, and then this one has a restriction. Susan must do exactly 100 push-ups in the course of a seven-day week. How many different schedules are there for her to do push-ups if she must do at least 20 on Saturday and Sunday on each weekend day? So she must do at least 20 on Saturday and Sunday. So let's say this is Saturday, this x6, and this corresponds to Sunday, x7. Well, let's make that happen. Let's, say, let's just say do 20 here, 20 here. That's 40 push-ups, and then start over. Then she has to figure out a way to divvy up the other 60. Because right, if she did 20 here and 20 there, that's 40. She only has 60 left to divvy up. 
And so now it starts over as this problem. How many non-negative integer solutions are there to this, where x1 through x7 add up to 60 now? And again, the 60 push-ups she has to figure out where they go. Those are the 60 zeros in the bit string in the, in the code word. Seven categories, so only six ones to divide the categories. So we have 66 total bits, and you know, choose where the six ones go, or choose where the 60 zeros go, either way. So let's put in 66, choose 6. All right. Ah, uh, okay. This one has at most. All right, so let's talk about this one. All right, so how many ways are there to select a set of eight donuts from three varieties? All right, now they want to give you they want to give numerical answers, so actual numbers here. So let's talk about this. Now this is the same as before, right? Eight donuts, three varieties. So that's you know donut number one type plus how many of donut number two type are you taking plus how many number of, of, of donut type three. And the number you take of each should add up to eight. I'm taking eight donuts and there are three varieties of donut. Now again, the first problem is there are no restrictions. So I'm just making bit strings with eight zeros for the donuts and two ones, you know, to separate the three varieties. So that's 10 choose two, all right? It's a total of 10 bits and I choose where the two ones go. Now this is simple enough. This is just 10 times nine. You know, that's 10 P2 divided by two factorial, all right? So this would be 45. There'd be 45 different ways to select eight donuts to you know collect eight donuts from from three different varieties with no restrictions. All right, 45, 10 choose two. Okay. Okay. Question two. Now we'll start getting some restrictions. How many ways are there to select the eight donuts from three varieties? in which at least three chocolate donuts are chosen. Okay, so back to the paper. Let's say, let's say this X1 represents the chocolate donuts, all right? And we want at least three chocolate. So if I want to select eight donuts, but have at least three of them be chocolate, well, just let's just take three chocolate to start with. So take three chocolate. Now, if I take three chocolate, that means from the from all the varieties, I have five more to select. So now I'm just taking. Now I'm just looking at this equation. All right. So I've already given three to the you know taken three of the chocolate. But I can still take more chocolate, right? It's at least three chocolates. So that's why X1 is still in here. Uh, and then, you know, when I'm talking about that, then, then just, you know, basically start over. You know, now let's count this number. How many ways can I divvy up five donuts among these, you know, take five donuts from these three varieties? So again, I'd have five zeros for the donuts. There are three, three varieties, three categories. So two ones to divvy those up. So seven choose two. All right, seven choose two, seven choose five, same thing. And again, that's seven P two, right? Seven times six uh, divided by two factorial, which is just two, this is 21. All right, there'll be 21 ways of selecting eight donuts from three varieties if at least three of them had to be chocolate. All right, so that's a uh, 21. All right, this one's a little different. How many ways are there to select a set of eight donuts from three varieties in which at most two chocolate donuts are selected? Now I'm going to do this a couple ways. All right, and we're going to bring in, remember that counting by complement, the complement rule? That'll come in handy here, but if I want at most, 
at most two chocolate. All right, now what I could do here, let's say this is, a, I'll call this method one. As I look at the different scenarios, you know, at most two chocolate, what if I had no, I could, I could take the number of ways I can get no chocolate and then add to that the number of ways I get exactly one, exactly one chocolate. And then add to that the number of ways I get exactly two chocolate. All right, because these are the only ways to get at most two chocolate. Right, at most two means two or less. Now the no chocolate. That means I have to replace x1 with 0. I'm taking no chocolate. So then I'm looking at this equation, you know, x2 plus x3, you know, let's say glazed and frosted or whatever. Those have to add up to 8. So there are 8, you know, there's 8 objects, 8 donuts, but only 2 varieties. So I'd have 8 zeros for the donuts, and I'm only picking from the other 2 varieties. So 1, 1. So this would be nine choose one, right? There, you mean nine choose one. But then I'd add to this the number of ways I could get exactly one chocolate. So I replace x1 with one. Now if I do that, we're just gonna have x2 plus x3, right? The sum of the other two varieties needs to be seven. And again, there'd be seven zeros, one one for the two varieties. All right, seven zeros and one one. So it would be 8 choose 1. All right, 8 choose 1. And then finally, the, other, the only other scenario where this happens is when there's exactly 2 chocolate. So I give 2 to chocolate, take, ch take 2 for chocolate, and then the other 2 have to add up to 6. Right? So these other two varieties uh, need to add up to 6 donuts. Right? And again, there would be 6 zeros, 1, 1. So this is 7 choose 1. Now 9 plus 8 plus 7, this is just 9 plus 8 plus 7. So the total number of ways to select 8 donuts to where I'm getting, you know, no more than 2 chocolate is um, you know, 24. All right, now that took a while. That took a while. Now I wouldn't want to do this, especially if they said at most 5 chocolate. You know, then I have to go no chocolate, get exactly one chocolate, exactly two, all the way up to exactly five, and add those up. Rather, based on what part A and part B looked like, I'd rather use the complement rule. You know, method, method two, I'll well, say use the complement rule. Remember, the number of ways to get at most the number of ways to get at most two chocolate would be the total number of ways to select eight donuts with no restrictions. Total number with no restrictions. Right, the total number of ways to select eight donuts from these three varieties minus the opposite of this. The number of ways to select not at most two chocolate. Now, at most two chocolate is two or less. So the opposite of that, the complement of that is greater than two. And since we're talking integers here, that's at least three. At least three chocolate. And both of these we found in part A, right? The total number of ways to select eight donuts with no restrictions was 45. And the total number of ways to select eight donuts from these three varieties where at least three are chocolate was from part B, which was 21. And 45 minus 21 is 24, exactly the same thing I got earlier when I separated into the three different cases and then add them up. So either way, I'm getting 24 ways to select these eight donuts from three varieties where in which at most 
uh, can be, at most two of them can be chocolate. Again, you know, see they're, they're showing you the, the complement rule here using parts one and two, right? parts A and B, whatever. Okay. All right, and then you have your exercises. Again, I hope this made sense, counting multi-sets, right, where you're selecting objects from, you know, so many objects from different varieties, right? You're selecting N objects from M different varieties, the number of ways that can happen. Or you can think about it as putting N indistinguishable balls into M distinguishable bins, the number of ways that can happen. Um, and again, you saw how in this last example, right, the complement rule came back, right? All the rules are coming back still. None of the rules go away. Um, so hopefully you remember stuff from earlier in the chapter as well. All right, and uh, you know, if you want, you can check the solutions. You can see them. I would still try to work them out. You know, please try to work them out. You know, get the solutions on your own uh, before you look at the solutions. Um, you know, because if you're just if you're just copying down solutions and not trying the problems, you're not going to learn anything. All right, and I would and I would also recommend looking at all of them. Right, if you it, it, you know, just to get more practice, more exposure, even if they're not all assigned. And if you have any questions, of course, you know, send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, thank you very much for watching.